Secondhand, secondhand straws. <laughs> How many have died from secondhand uh, styrofoam containers or gas powered leaf blowers? But then how many have died from secondhand smoke? Tens of thousands according every year, according to the CDC. This is important. I'm hearing from neighbors and residents here in Palm Springs about how they're suffering, especially multi-unit housing. So I really want to keep a focus on this. The ordinance has been written, it's been processed, it's gone through over and over again. So we want to get this forwarded so city council will eventually pass it and we can hopefully become a smoke-free city. Even if it's just in part, done in parts, we still need to move that forward. Second, I just want to encourage, uh, since we banned plastic straws and all that kind of stuff, plastic grass, um, maybe that's something that could be considered too. But now another one. Um, some of you have already heard me talk about this in the past at other meetings, and that is um, liquefied raw sewage going into our aquifers. And I once thought that everything, all the businesses and homes in the city of Palm Springs were on sewer hookups. Well, it turned out not to be true. I learned a few years ago doing some meetings uh, with the uh, Genopi neighborhood that the Arnica track was, fortunately, the city picked up on that and Measure J actually funded it. And that project's now complete. They are now on hooked up on sewer. Well, it turns out that um, the Garnet Business District, which is in my neighborhood organization of Upper West Side, all those businesses along Garnet, that's south of the freeway, north of the wash, um, none of them are. And they're major producers. Some of them have newer batch septic systems. Some of them have old ones, but they're all leaching into our critical aquifer. That means liquefied raw sewage going into our drinking water, our cooking water. This is our primary one. This is also where, um, they're right on top of it and next to it. This is also our primary imported water um, percolation ponds that you'll see under the wind turbines uh, up at the north end. That's where we recharge our aquifers. So this is a really important issue. Um, there are plans. Now we have a rare opportunity to uh, hook them up because of the two new bridge projects on Indian Canyon. How am I doing on time? Um, you have one minute left. Okay. And, thanks, Good. okay. Yep. Okay. And so what I want to bring to the attention is that we've got this issue and we want to get the city to keep an eye on this and not wait until those bridge projects are completed to decide to start hooking up those sewer lines. The projects are already planned um, and approved and warranted, but they did put on mothballs because there was no way to hook them up before, but now there will be. So we're also looking at, I, I'm going to reach out to environmental health, find out where else we have some of these septic tanks, but apparently there are some that are under the radar. So this is really critical with our water. North of the freeway, um, projects have been approved to go on uh, newer batch systems, but they have to get an agreement with the Mission Springs Water District for their new plant that's being developed. And so they will. So if you see that on those, they have to abandon those once the connection can be made, but that's because that facility is still being built north of the freeway. And I'm probably out of time. Thanks, Opie. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Um, do I have anyone on the Zoom who wishes to make a public comment at this time? Okay, hearing none, I will go ahead and close the public comment period. Okay, so moving on to the chairs report section. Uh, on this, we're going to introduce our new uh, councillor, Ken Alexander, so if you'd like to take a few seconds. This is where I say a few words about it. I mean, they're going to be very few. So, um, oh, you're going to be great. Yeah, no, I should be on. Great. So, uh, my name is Ken Alexander. I've been on one PS as chair for about a year now. I also volunteer at myself to teach um, seniors computers and help them with that. In addition to that, I also teach seniors aerobics keep them healthy. And I also volunteer James O. Jesse, same kind of thing, teaching seniors and helping them with their computers. Oh, um, this is just a natural thing for me to get onto this committee because I've been trying to get involved in public reports. Thank you. 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 Okay, so this is moving on to the election party. Sure. Thank you.
Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so let me just start the screen share. Um, so um, as most of you know, I am almost as new at this as most of you are. So uh, we're learning every day. And um, so we've gotten some feedback from um, some of our other commission liaisons here in city staff on the best way to run an election for a commission. So as some of you may remember, we when we had about half of our new commission appointed in the summer, we needed a chair and a vice chair. So we had uh, Andrew and Don generously step up to be our interim chair and vice chair, um, you know, at that kind of early point when people didn't necessarily know each other, people didn't necessarily know what, they were, what the commission did, et cetera. And so, you know, very grateful for the two of them for stepping up. Um, we have reached kind of about a six month mark where now that we've got everybody on the commission, felt it was time to kind of revisit that interim aspect. Um, you'll notice that it is on the agenda tonight to do the election tonight. Um, however, generally speaking, we've learned in other commissions that um, the process, usually you kind of initiate the process and do it a month later because that allows for time for people to kind of think about how they might want to participate in a role um, and also talk to other commissioners one-on-one, -on -one, not in groups, Brown Act, Reminder, um, so talk to each other directly, please don't get me in trouble, um, but um, to ask you know, either consider nominating other commissioners if there's someone you want to ask if they'd be interested in the role. Um, and then at the next meeting, we'll ask four commissioners to nominate um, who they would recommend for the election. You are welcome to nominate yourself. Um, however, generally speaking, other commissioners or other commissions tend to have other commissioners nominate the individuals. Um, so I wanted to make sure that, you know, everybody had time to kind of think about, um, you know, whether they want to ask to be nominated for a role, consider a role. Um, just as a reminder, there are two roles that we tend to elect for, um, the chair and the vice chair. Um, the chair is the person who is in charge of the meeting. Um, the chair and the vice chair work with me to develop the agenda on a monthly basis. Um, so that usually entails like, at least one meeting working together to kind of pull together who the speakers are, who, you know, what topics we're going to cover, make sure we're square on any votes we want to take, and, and develop and post those agendas. Um, and the chair is kind of the main person who runs the meeting, the vice chair is the backup for that. Um, the chair also sometimes takes the role of speaking on behalf of the commission, you know, obviously after the group has come to a consensus on what that commission statement should be. Um, and, yeah, and that can vary too, you know, there are commissioners who have specific expertise in certain areas and, you know, the commission can decide to appoint, like, for example, Commissioner Clark gave the statement on behalf of the commission for the drive through at the last council meeting, like that can definitely happen, it doesn't have to be the chair who does everything, but in the absence of someone who was particularly specially designated to speak on a matter, the chair would generally speak on a matter of that type. Um, and so that's kind of the lay of the land. Um, so wanted to kind of set that structure um, and see if there are any questions anyone has, either for me or for the current chair and vice chair, or for any of our commissioners who may have experience filling these roles in other city bodies. I know um, we have a number of people who've, who've filled those roles in different um, city uh, areas in the past. So uh, I'll pause there for any questions or clarifications that anyone would like. Seems very good. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, does anyone really feel like they've got to have an election tonight? I think we should move to the next time, but just want to make sure. Okay. So our chair and vice chair will continue into the January meeting, and then in the January meeting we'll have the election. Um, if anyone has any questions about how, like, if you want to talk directly to another commissioner and want to know the best way to do that, feel free to reach out to me. Um, the recommendation is still that I kind of facilitate that to make sure we're staying within Brown Act. Um, you know, obviously, if you run into somebody at Albertsons, I'm not going to be there to tell you how to talk to them. But um, <laughs> if you would like for me to help us a little bit, that, I'm happy to do so. Oh, sounds good. Cool. Okay, so uh, then we're going to be moving on to staff comments then, please. Great. Sounds good. Let me just pull this up. I didn't have all my tabs set where I wanted them, so I apologize. And thanks for everybody's patience. So, um, so you all got a chance to hopefully take a look at the staff memo, um, which I appreciate you all allowing me to develop and send because it's actually a really useful exercise for us to be like, what did we do this month and where are we and who am I? Um, so I appreciate that. Um, there's a couple of things I want to highlight and I mostly want to tap in also our team members here to talk about some of their work and there's a couple of things that they're taking your feedback on as well. Um, so as soon as the world's largest attachment loads, I will scroll through a couple of spots. Um, so um, first thing that I wanted to talk, talk about, you know, always this is my, my sort of hot topic section where 
I flag for commissioners things that might uh, be interesting to them, either for input or participation. Um, so the first thing I want to draw to your attention um, is the potential extension of the Palm Springs Disposal Services franchise. Um, I was hoping to maybe be able to make a presentation to the group at this meeting about it, but there's still some details and staff reports that I haven't quite finished yet. So uh, the scours of the committee will see a presentation about this on uh, Thursday, January 4th. If anybody's interested in that, you're welcome to join in. Um, even if you're not a member of that subcommittee, you can you know pop on Zoom if you want to hear about it, like that kind of thing. Um, you just wouldn't be able to have a voting role if you're not a member of that subcommittee, but you're still welcome to lodge any questions. I'll also make sure to circulate those materials to everyone just in case you have a specific question. Um, the so reason the, just a uh, question. So if we do come along, we're mm -hmm. not going to run into any issues if there's too many of us in one. You place. you would have to participate as a member of the public. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Um, so as long as you're not having a secret meeting in the corner of the room, um, we should. You know, if you're kind of just in listening mode, you're welcome to do that. Okay. Um, and so that's how we handle that in the past. You can kind of put on the fly on the wall. Right. Um, though you're still welcome to make public comment in the public room. Uh, are they anticipating any major changes in the franchise agreement? Because I know gonna, it's been a big deal. I'm going to get that. Uh, or I'm going to do that now. Uh, so the main reason they're asking for a potential extension. Okay. Back up a little bit. Okay. Sure. There. there. Yep. Better? Okay, great. <laughs> um, I thought maybe closer was better than the rock and roll instinct coming in. But um, <laughs> the, um, so the reason they're asking for the potential extension has to do with getting new vehicles. So the Palm Springs Disposal franchise was extended in 2021 um, to, uh, to incorporate some of the new things that we had to do to comply with SB 1383, which is the statewide composting law. Um, so it was extended for, I believe, seven years starting in 2021 um, in order to allow for us to, you know, work with Palm Springs Disposal to incur that additional expense and, you know, update the franchise rates and include that new service. Um, there are a lot of new trucks that are required in order to, um, to pick up that, all of the new organic waste. They've been working with older trucks, launch trucks, you know, kind of their extra reserve trucks, et cetera, but they're hoping to also be able to procure um, like newer, cleaner trucks. So whether that's um, more CNG trucks, which they already currently have, and then also potentially electric trucks. Um, so the reason they're asking for the potential extension has to do with the period of the financing for the trucks. Draft trucks are extremely expensive. They cost like $150,000. Um, and so getting financing for a number of trucks, you're not normally amortizing that over like a Forward to five year period, you're normally amortizing that over more like a seven to 10 year period. So, if they're looking at a, a franchise agreement that could theoretically expire in basically five years from now, that the, the sort of the timing is, is not great for them to look at um, those new trucks. Um, so, that is basically the main question that we'll be putting before the city council is whether they're okay with it, adding that additional extension with potentially a couple of additional things that they want to expand in their waste collection program. Um, so we're going to talk about um, potentially having them help us with the shredding and e-waste disposal events in a more formal way, which is great news for me. Um, and also a couple of things related to how they might hire people working at the navigation center or who are coming through the navigation center, which is assumed to be open to transitional um, like housing uh, situation for people experiencing homelessness here in Palm Springs. Um, so there's a couple of like additional little things that come in there, but it's, it's mainly about the sort of the timing for um for the financing for new vehicles so um it is a relatively targeted extension and i believe the extension they're requesting is three years it's not another 20 but it's a it would be targeted but it is a potential extension um so that's something that we'll do a more full presentation at the scour meeting about this um and I'll also circulate information to the commissioners to review the plan. but that will be going before the city council on january 11th any questions on that? I'm understanding that you will get a lot more information about this in like two weeks. Excuse me. No, I don't have okay. any okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just wanted to make sure your spirit wasn't trying to first call the question. Um, no. That makes sense. Okay. Oh, okay, good. Yes. Uh, so since it's going to be going to council on the 11th, mm -hmm. we, Scour, need to be prepared to say something. Yep. Okay. Um, so I will get you some materials to review uh, before I, I will not be here next week. Um, our lovely rest of the team will be here in rotational manners, um, but uh, I'm going to send it to you by Thursday, because that's when I'm leaving to go to by, by this Thursday. This Thursday. Yeah, some stuff later. Because if this is scholars, but then we'll also... Um, Climate action? We need to look at it in our other... 
<clears throat> so yeah, I mean that yeah, you will be able to look at that um, because uh, climate action meets on the tenth before the council meeting on the eleventh. So that doesn't give us much time. But you'll have the materials yeah. by this Thursday, so okay. you can just you can look at them and then I guess you can kind of finalize your discussion in the meeting on the tenth. But okay. yeah. Yeah, it's not a ton of time. I apologize. Normally, I would like to give you a little bit more of a run. I think I'm still kind of trying to get into the rhythm of when things are going to council, when they're probably here, making sure we're getting all the notice deadlines. So I'm still trying to make sure that we, I, I'm kind of a seat of the pants, last minute kind of person. So all these one to two week advance, like postings and month in advance to review to get on the thing is like, uh, it's my brain. Um, I so. did turn my microphone on. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's one of the things it helps one, us for the recording. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One one of the things was is um I think I actually spoke at um one of the previous as a as a community member about the businesses actually working within that, right. and that's why I want to bring that up. Sure. Totally. And, and that's look at that, that, that aspect of it because that's what's important. Right. Yeah. Does that make that it does make sense? And I know you mentioned that at our last scour meeting as well. Something we want to have more of a conversation about for that kind of relationship with the businesses. Um, and yeah, I will make sure to share the scope of the amendment uh by this person. <clears throat> Any other questions about that enormously hairy topic? Okay, cool. Um, so um the rest is a little bit more cut and dry. So Next subcommittee meeting dates, the scour meeting is Thursday, January 4th, um, climate action and transportation meeting Wednesday, January 10th. Um, and then um, I actually need to tag in really great. I'm sorry. Um, Bernard is having issues getting onto the Zoom. Christian, can I tag you in to help get him onto the right Zoom? Yep. Um, do you have the email there? Uh, yes. Sorry. Cool. Um, because we uh, need Bernard to help us talk about a new um sorry, sorry I'm just uh thanks for letting me do the things at once I'm really sorry this um Christian I'm talking to you in okay um then the next farmer's market table that we're going to do is Saturday January 6th um we will be doing a slightly smaller version of the transportation survey which Commissioner Clark was very graciously helped us with early on a nice brisk Saturday morning. It's a little not brisk. It's pretty warm out. It's pretty, pretty warm. Pretty comfortable. <laughs> um, so if anyone is interested in helping do some transportation surveying, um, this basically entails being someone with an iPad, um, helping people with the iPad, um, and explaining to people why they might want to take the transportation survey. We don't do a lot of aggressive, like, how are you doing today? Please take the survey. But, um, you know, we do try to be there for people who want to take it. Um, do you do that? that is from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. So any hours within there that you're willing to give me, I will accept. Um, I'll be here the whole time. Um, if you want to come from like 10 to noon, 10 to 11, you know, 12, 12 to 1 is a little quiet. So maybe not that one, but um, any of the hours before that. Um, and you can also feel free to just swing by, but helpful for me to know how many people to expect. So I bring up chairs. Um, so that would be helpful. Um, we may also do a table at Village Fest on a Thursday evening. So if anybody would prefer to tag in on a Village Fest, that's usually from like 4 to 9 p.m. on Thursdays um, that they do that roughly, maybe a little bit less. Um, so we're trying to confirm that specific date for Village Fest. We don't have them locked in, but we will let the commission know about that. Um, we'll be presenting to the Upper West Side Neighborhood Meeting on January 20th. Um, and then we're also going to do a table at the Palm Springs Health Run, which is the 5K that goes from Blue Party Park. Um, so if anyone is interested in helping out with that table on the 27th, I think I probably got the meeting on the 20th covered because it'll be a relatively tactical presentation, I feel like. But if anybody's going to be there, let me know. Um, obviously, you'll be there then. Um, since it's your neighborhood organization, so you'll yeah. be <laughs> there. Um, and then, but if anybody wants to come before is already planning to be at the Fulcrum on the 27th, um, we'll also accept any commissioner assistance and funding that you are willing to offer. Um, I will pause briefly to see if there's any questions about events, upcoming things. Do we just email you? Yep, yeah, just shoot me an email. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll probably be the call for all these particular events. So just shoot me a note if you would like to join. Okay. Um, and then we have two survey things that we want to talk about. So um, Christian is in the middle of helping Bernard get on the Zoom. So maybe Juliet, I might tag over to you. Um, we are going to ask for some beta testing tonight um, for something that Juliet is doing. Yes, question? We have some questions about your report. 
Yeah, yeah so we're, that's not part of this. we're so this is Juliet survey is kind of the beginning of my report. So let's do Juliet survey and then we can come to questions about the report. If that, does that work? We're still in the midst. Okay. 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 Hopefully. Sorry to max time, I'll probably get multiple of my goals. But um I created a survey to figure out how many people know about energy efficiency upgrades in Palm Springs. And so this is going to be helping with my overall chain like project of you know creating more energy efficient buildings in Palm Springs. And so what I'm asking the commission to do is kind of take my survey. We have a couple of iPads, but we also have the QR codes. You guys can take this on your phone or your iPads. I didn't print out the link for your laptop, so sorry about that. But at least you guys have your phone. And so I guess I'm asking for you guys to take the survey and probably give me some feedbacks of how to enhance the user experience with this, or if you would uh, like to see other questions being added onto the survey. So, yeah. I don't know if anyone wanted to get my an iPad. Okay. So we'll maybe take like five minutes to do this now, um, and we'll I'll bring some QR codes around, um, and then yeah, thank you, Julia. We'll yeah, we'll pass the QR codes around. And if anybody would like to do it on the computer, I'll pull up the URL. <laughs> yes, let me figure out the best way to do that. Okay, follow up immediately. <laughs> well, that's good feedback. Have sure you heard of your path? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely don't. Um, hey, Julia, I'm going to grab the URL yeah. from that really quickly. And then I'll give it to anybody who'd like to do it on their laptop. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 There's a map I've been trying to find. So this means like everybody has one map. <laughs> And I think this is sort of a an approximation. If you yeah, are not no, familiar with the original, don't. I'm going to type this really long code for you. Or unless you want to copy it from here, it's this long code uh, um, uh, that I can get for you. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll find out. Not going so great. <laughs> Would anyone else like to do it on their computer? And I can type it. Okay. Yeah. It's, so are we clicking on this? Yep. Tell us what Theoretically. We're... If you're having a if you're having an issue with it though, um, my fingers are short. No, that's okay. <laughs> that is good to know if you're having a hard time selecting the neighborhood. So I think you might be having a little bit of difficulty with the neighborhood select. Okay. I can either type it for you or you can copy it from here. It's a long code. Here, why don't I type it for you? Sorry. I'm gonna take your laptop up here. And I promise this is as far as I'm taking it. I'll bring you right back. <laughs> Why can't you set it one, two, three, four in this one? Thank you. Oh, for the ratio. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. So okay. you just have one and then it'll be able to it. Okay. But I can't take this. I... So you have to hold the three bars and then, yeah. Is this all that? What I'm doing on that is. Oh, so this one would be like yeah, the internal. So, so you would I did that, but then it. The way to move it is to get that little oh. Yeah. oh, oh, the way to move uh, it is to what? That's that's that is one of the other issues we had. I had with yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. might want to put that. Yeah, that, yeah. that would. As soon as you push it, it orders everything. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. all of a sudden, oh, oh, hold on here. I've got broken. Now I understand. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Did your head just out of here? Thank you for taking our transportation survey. I can tell from your browser history. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
And if anybody has any questions, um, Christian and Juliet can also help out with that. We're asked which um, practices would be easy for you to do. Mm -hmm. um, there were three that I indicated I wanted to do, and I ranked those um, in the list, but then it automatically ranked everything else below it, and I'm not particularly interested in those. So is there any way to get those out of the ranking? It, it may, it may uh, oh. skew the results. And maybe we can figure out a different way to like select yeah. like a each on each individual measure, like mm -hmm. whether you would want to do it, like easy, medium, hard on each measure. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I think as of right now, I can't help you with that problem, <laughs> but that's a good information <laughs> for me to take down. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to mm -hmm. point it out because mm -hmm. probably something could be done as LP suggested to you know, do it mm -hmm. a little differently. So I think one of these things looking at this is kind of echoing what Wood says, once you've run out of the things that you like even considered, like there's a look, like a couple of things up here, you're like I have no genuine idea about it at all. Mm -hmm. And if they're just grouped to the bottom, that will like definitely skew the results because I'm not choosing them. They're just at the bottom of my list. Okay. Uh, there's only like what four or five students. Like, so yeah, I don't. If you could have like a not interested, or it's not, or you haven't thought about it yet, it's, it's not considered. I I have the same problem. Yeah, uh, I have a new mobile home. Almost everything is done, uh, but I can't do solo. So because <laughs> if you do a thing where you can say like it's already done, because then you'll be able to get information on areas which people aren't even thinking about or constantly doing. Oh, okay. right. Okay. Great. Maybe do you want uh you want to add like energy efficient appliances? Mm -hmm. uh, like like energy efficient appliances like wash and dryer. Mm -hmm. Many people are changing those things right now and that can be an easy one for okay. some people to change. Thank you. Just from the editing perspective, the are you experiencing needs to have a check for no, I don't have any of those. Okay. <laughs> How's everybody else done? Any other things that are popping out? Any things that are challenging? I know the neighborhood select is a little buggy. We'll work on that. I finally figured it out. Okay. <laughs> Maybe do you want to add whether you are living in a mobile home sure. or a because there are some restrictions on some kinds of homes where they mm -hmm. can't make any alterations. Can you get by without the neighborhood maps and instead just ask for intersection or something like that? Because in it, because a lot of there's a lot of Palm Springs that's not in right. It's not in the neighborhood. Yeah, mm -hmm. we so we looked at a few different ways to do that. The if we can get people to consistently spell their streets, the <laughs> intersection works. <laughs> that is not always so consistent because we don't necessarily want to ask for an address if people don't want to share it. Um, right. So maybe Julia, I don't know. Did you have any other thoughts on how we might capture a location mm -hmm. if the neighborhood isn't quite it? I or maybe we it. can do broader categories like north, central, south. Like I don't know. Maybe we can. Or major intersection would major be. Intersection. Okay. I mean, I, I, they can't spell talk but search achiever, but other than that, that's a, <laughs> and I can't spell LCO. Uh, but uh, I it, because because of those neighborhoods that aren't. How oh, we should capture people who are seasonal or people who have vacation. They're here three months out of the year. But the home is still taking energy. Sure. Um, Juliet, any thoughts on that immediately, or is that something you want to look at? I think that's something that we want to consider. I will definitely let you know if we do decide to add that to the um, survey. Yeah, how, how are we dealing with rental people circuits? Because they won't be in charge of right. most of the upgrades. It'll be landlords and rental companies. Mm -hmm. So we get those. Or we just hope they I think or Juliet, wait. You're wanting me to be honest, I forgot that group. Okay. So, <laughs> <that's> my fault. <laughs> no, 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 this is the beta testing <laughs> session. Yeah, I think you all heard. I was looking at you know, like, I'm gonna put this survey in Spanish and that's all I have. And <laughs> I completely forgot about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think so, most you. of 
rentals are taking a big get there. Property management companies are doing it because I know a lot of them in real estate, a lot of people just give it to a property management mm -hmm. and they have a kind of more a pulse on what's going on. So you might want to reach out to them. What? Sort of related to that. I mean, there's a number of things that people can't do. Right. Mm -hmm. you can, mm -hmm. Even if, even if they own a condo, they may not be able to make the modification to put on the sole pan. Sure. Right. Yeah. So we can we can add a can't right. uh, yeah. category in addition to not interested. Those are kind of two different things. Yeah. There could be um, one, one easy way to get that information. Your list for the turf mm -hmm. fresh. Mm -hmm. Um, any of the large rental uh, communities and things like that had to go through give you all the information to do that. Mm -hmm. So if you use that list, you'll get a load of large buildings and mm -hmm. rental companies that you can... And they've already uh, opted into oh, sharing their contact exactly. information. Yeah. So. Well, I'm that, of course. Yeah. It's not, I'll spare time on the afternoon, just turn yeah. it for their door. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Cool. Okay, yes. Yeah. Oh, um, Every three months, Southern California Edison sends us a form, or should, should, should not a form, sends us what our usage is, mm -hmm. and it also sends us what our usage is for our area. And I'm like, where are they getting that, that data for our area? I'm wondering is if we were to go to Southern California Edison and ask questions, that we would actually be able to see how they're breaking it down also. And then taking what we have already set up and use that made that same format mm -hmm. try to in reference to the areas that you're talking about. Oh, sure. Like like what are their grouping areas? What are their grouping areas? areas? Because I actually sit there and look at it and go, in my area, summertime, I want to say 75% of the people that live around me in South Palm Springs are gone. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this ain't right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, that's a it's a good suggestion. We'll look into seeing. Yeah. What they might be willing to share with us on their location or things. Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Get comfortable. <clears throat> this would be painful to figure out how to do it, but it's actually fairly easy is to ask renters, what would you like your landlords to do? Hmm. Good question. Hmm. I, I don't know that you want to do a separate question, but somehow or other you can. We can figure out how to phrase the interested question mm -hmm. to include something like that, I think. Any other thoughts on this? Going along with what Don said, you might want to split it out into a separate questionnaire for renters, just like there's a questionnaire for visitors and a question, questionnaire for residents on transportation. Because if they, they could just select that as a drop down at the start, mm -hmm. do you own a home? Are you renting? Are you visiting? And then you could be able to target your questions for what's possible. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> Sorry, ask, no. ask about the type of house, housing they live in. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, I know that already. Yeah. So we can make sure we get those building and housing rates. And mobile homes. And mobile, yes, I have that on the list. Yeah. Are we considering anything about like fireplaces if they have one? Because I know uh, we don't know how many people are using gas or how many people are doing regular yeah. old ones. That's a good question. Um, we can look that. <clears throat> would be good to know. I have one, but I don't know how it works. So. Oh yeah, mine is a decorative object. <laughs> okay, anything else? Okay, awesome. Thanks everyone for being our beta testing group. This is very valuable feedback. So really appreciate everybody taking a few minutes. Um, Christian, I'm gonna tag you in to talk a little bit about the transportation survey, and then we can go to questions on the rest of the report. These are these are just the topic highlights that I wanted to make sure we covered. So yeah, we administered the survey. Um, right now we have 170 responses for the standard transportation survey, but only 12 from the visitor one. Um, we posted it in a lot of places, the community centers, um, both the libraries, um, sent out to the businesses via, um, or the people in the business district, uh, via Dean Grubel, um, also the 1PS, they gave a presentation on it. Um, yeah, so we're looking for 150 more uh, by the end of the year. Um, January 15th is kind of our deadline, but we'll see where we are then um, and what we should do to get more kind of responses. And there's also more events going on in January, so that might, you know, be a reason that we extend it. So, yeah. All right, so all of your family members, friends, and staff there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, so we're not going to give you quotas yet. <laughs> <laughs>
Any questions for Christian on the survey? I have not looked at the data yet. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, board of directors of Four Seasons agreed to send out the link in the newsletter. Oh, oh, oh. So Roy is winning. <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> So, gauntlet has been thrown, everyone. Um, cool. Any other questions for Christian? Do we have it next? Oh, sorry. Um, do we have it on next door through city? I eight? believe Denise posted it, but let's double check next door. Um, thanks for the reminder. We can double check on that. Actually, Bomb Springs, Palm Springs, Colts, who's another? Yeah. Normally, they write that stuff really quickly. Thank Um. Chair Forsky, did you Okay, nope. great. Any <laughs> survey well, question? Or uh, no? I, actually, that survey. Yep. Uh, Denise sends out the uh, once a month uh, report to all of the neighborhood organizations. Just to make sure that she knows. Yeah, it was in the December one, and okay. we'll ha we'll make sure to bump it for the January okay. as well, so that's even next that was actually the, the public launch of the survey. Oh, was in the, okay. think, just, and of course, I didn't read it. That's okay. <laughs> um, okay, and I so I know I said I'd turn over to questions um, after that, but I kind of lied. I have to talk about two administer three administrative matters really quickly. One is now that we have new Commissioner Alexander, we're back up to 10 members, which means subcommittees can now have five people again. Um, so you'll note here that both of our existing subcommittees do have one vacancy. Um, so if anyone is interested in joining one of those subcommittees, I would encourage you to reach out to the chair of the specific subcommittee, which Don is for Scour and Roy is for Climate Action. Um, so I'd encourage you to reach out to them. And if anybody would like to be, you know, raise their hand and maybe on the break, you can reach out to them and we can talk about it at the end. But if you aren't sure yet, we can always revisit it at the next meeting. So we do have space for one person per meeting. Um, Christian, any update on Bernard? Do you need to yeah. tell people at Scour is? Oh, sure. Yes, I can. Thank you. Uh, Scour is standing. I, I don't know, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you for the prompt. Uh, Scour is the standing subcommittee on waste reduction. Is that right? Waste reduction, not yes. waste and recycling. Okay, great. Because it's WR, so that's I guess that. Um, so standing yeah, subcommittee on. I didn't know it was. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Scrubbing the floor before we. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. So it's uh, the pun, I believe, is intentional. And um, so yeah. So that's the subcommittee that deals with uh, matters relating to waste and uh, those sorts of things. Okay. Next administrative item. So as we discussed at the last couple meetings, um, as of January first, um, being a commissioner and participating remotely gets harder. Um, basically, you have to publish your location and allow members of the public to come there also. My encouragement <laughs> is that you come here if you want to participate in the meeting. Um, you know, we do allow for excused absences if you're traveling or you're sick or something. But if you are if you really want to participate in a meeting and you are in Johannesburg, um, let me know and we'll figure out how to make it work. Um, but it is much more difficult to do so. So um, everybody's, I think, kind of on this rhythm already, but we also will not be able to kind of have the remote meeting option that I know we had to avail ourselves of in October because of the conflict with the state of the city. Um, so it just means that it makes things a little bit more logistically rigid, not necessarily more difficult, but a little more rigid. Does anyone have any questions about this? Does, do the public, are the public able to participate? Great question. So this actually came up at the last um, the last council meeting. So the public is able to participate um, via Zoom. We're still going to maintain the Zoom simulcast like we do now. Um, however, um, there's going to be some new language that you'll see for the first time in our next meeting agenda. They just sent it to us today. That's why you're not seeing it today in this agenda because I published this last week. Um, that uh, we are going to be requesting that any members of the public who want to participate remotely reach out to us proactively to receive the Zoom information, as opposed to us just posting it online. Um, so we'll still be recording the meetings, posting them to YouTube, which I just figured out how to do. Um, so you're going to be seeing a lot of meetings on YouTube from this mission. Um, so we'll be recording them and posting them. And then if you have this, if you've reached out to us for the Zoom, you'll be able to watch it online. You can also call in, and then we're requesting that people. Um, submit public comment cards, kind of like they do at the city council. Um, we will still be able to take public comment from anybody who comes to the meeting and wants to provide comment, but in order to get included and shared with the commissioners, we're going to start asking for those public comment cards to be lodged in advance. That's good. Okay. One, yeah. more, yes. one more question. Yeah. Will our meetings also then start being published on government uh, channel? 
Yes. Yeah. The seventeenth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they'll. I think so. That's a good question. Let me figure out exactly how that happens. Yeah. But um, let me figure. Yeah. I think. I think so. They're definitely on YouTube. That I can tell you. I will check on the TV. The public has asked me okay. why they were not. Gotcha. That's why. Well, the reason they weren't on YouTube in the past is because I didn't know I was supposed to do the YouTube. So it, now I know. It wasn't the YouTube. Oh, it was just the, yeah. the TV channel. Yeah, the TV channel. Cool. Let me check. Because we had the ads up there mm, for right. waste mm -hmm. and uh, climate change, but not, but not the meetings. Not the meetings. Sure. Okay, cool. I will double check on that and figure Thanks. out if there's anything to do. Thanks for talking. Any other questions about that? No, I just learned that we're on the TV channel. I don't know how old those ads are. I, know how, I mean, the the it's, we try to stick to evergreen content for those ads so yeah. that they don't have to be revisited often. <laughs> okay, uh, all right, that's cool. Right. <laughs> but if anybody's ever browsing there and you're like, you know, you've got an ad in there for a sprinkler check from 2020, please let me know. Uh, no, we all take it down. Um, okay, last thing. I know the email addresses have been a little tricky. Can I have a show of hands of who has been able to access their email address? Okay, got a few people. And so we've got, I'd say about half and half. We've got, you, you don't have that yet, so. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and i sorry, I didn't see your hand. Yeah. Not yet. Okay, so we've got about half of the people who are still having a little trouble. If you're in the group that's having a little trouble, please see me before you leave, and we'll make sure to set a separate help desk ticket for you to get access to that. Yeah. Um, yes. So we'll, we'll in the future, all our communication be through the email, yes. not have to be the personal. Correct, yeah, so it'll all go yeah. through. We'll the um, great question. So I was going to say January 1st, but since everybody's still having some trouble, we'll go through January using both. So right now I send everything to both of your email addresses, like your personal and your other one. If anybody would like me to stop sending to the personal email, just let me know. Um, but otherwise, I'll continue sending to both until the end of January or until we kind of get the all clear that everybody's good and has had a chance to get in the rhythm. Um, so I'll take February 1st. Thanks for the question. The only challenges with it is uh, in order to put it in, in your, to add it on your phone, uh -huh. you have to delete your work email. Oh, and that's now weird. I can. Yeah, that's, you know. that sounds maybe not great. Um, so, so, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's like, yeah. you know, but, I mean, I, my, my work email is Outlook. Oh, so in order to add it to Outlook, that it has to because it's a government email, you have to remove it. Well, mm. So now I have Let's, to use it on the error. Oh, oh, so oh, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah that's that cool. that up. Because well, that's what I was planning to do. Use multiple at the same time. You can, but I guess with this one, it says you have to remove the old email in order to add this email. Right. Let me check with IT to see if they have a recommendation on that. Yeah. Um, maybe they've run into so, that before. As a workaround, what I started doing is just go into outlook.live.com mm -hmm. and use it on, on Safari oh, sure. like on and the browser. browser. Oh, yeah. So, but then you're not getting the notifications necessarily. I'm not getting the notifications, so I always have to remind myself to right. check. Yeah, but, but yeah, but thank you. It, it, it will work somehow. I have multiple Outlook accounts. It does, yeah. I, I don't know why this this one it asked me. But she told me that I have to remove it. <laughs> if you could actually, set, if you have either any screenshots or I can, anything that I can you can send. send, you, send you, and yeah. you have, did I set up a help desk ticket for you? I, I don't remember. think you did. No, I didn't. Okay, yeah. So if you send it to me, then we'll send it to okay. IT and just see. And, I, and I'll try again and mm -hmm. see. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure you're probably not the only person who is either having or is going to have that issue. So. Okay, oh, he apparently has an answer for it. Yeah, I've got, yeah, so the Outlook, even though it's on Outlook, you've got to go for, if it's a government account, it's an education account, or if it's a business account, you have to go to the Microsoft 365 login. Yeah. So that's a different login than the Outlook login, which is just a person. Yeah. Those are different formats. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's, that's why I have it set up on my phone as well. I can show you during the break if you want how I have it set up on the workbook, awesome. um, just in case, yeah, it's similar to the 365. Um, I'm sorry, I saw there was another question, but I lost who had it. Um, did you, I think you told me at the other subcommittee mm -hmm. meeting that you were already going Yes, to I sent a help desk ticket for you, but I haven't heard anything back on it yet, so I'll send another one tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, now we can turn it over to questions on the rest of the report, and I know I've gone way beyond my um a lot of time on this and i apologize but um and we'll we're going to kind of stick to our rhythm of like keeping people's comments to roughly two minutes at a time you're welcome to get back in line if you go through your two minutes but just to kind of keep us moving all right who's got the first question hi commissioner Rotner. sorry for the difficulty glad you were able to join us everybody we do have commissioner Rotner here with us <laughs> um commissioner we are um going through the staff comment we just talked about email addresses 
I think it's me too. Yeah, that's fine. I just was oh. telling him. <laughs> I had just had several comments, sure. which, I, which I which I sent to you. You're yeah. saying them. Uh, I I was glad to see all this because it helps to know what you do. That you're swamped way too much with EV charging stuff. Uh, a lot of time on and charges. you asked us to go out and just test the chargers. Yep. <laughs> I guess I don't know who all. <laughs> or says like, I'm not going to plug my car in the. Uh, I I'll test a couple of them. Okay. Uh, I have I have a plug-in hybrid, so it's not not the same thing. But, just those specific ones at the convention center. Oh. Uh, that's really the main ones that I need some additional help with on the testing front, because I never have issues, but a lot of people report issues to me, so I'm trying to figure out how to replicate the issues. That people and the convention center parking lot. Convention center parking. Okay. Um, and as I said, I, we it seems that this really shouldn't be something that you're you're doing. Uh, but that's you don't need to talk about that. That's just it seems odd that she has to do this work. It should be somebody else in the city doing it. So that's my comment. Okay, I'm happy to just talk through a little bit on that front just to give everybody some context. So um, we do have a license agreement in place with our EV chargers, which is not uncommon for cities across the country. Um, that theoretically, so we don't pay like very much money at all to have most of our EV chargers. But that also means we don't own them. Um, so we have a third party that owns the chargers and operates the chargers. Um, it's kind of like a middle person. So they're not the charger manufacturer. They kind of sit in between. Um, this contract dates back to about 2021. So it does predate me. Um, I don't know that it predates everyone on the commission. So feel free to chime in if you have any thoughts. Um, but um, the, the challenge is that it does require pretty much like daily, at least weekly, if not daily, on-site tending. Um, the third party who owns the stations is not based here. So I become kind of the de facto site monitor. Um, I also have an electric car, so it's a little bit easier for me to test things, you know, to kind of troubleshoot things because I'm a little bit more familiar with the equipment because I have to use it to get around. Um, so this is, I think I've talked to a number of colleagues in other cities. Everyone is facing a similar burden in terms of tending to the infrastructure um, that wasn't necessarily anticipated. I think the whole sector is going through some growing pains. Um, hoping to see some improvement in the future, but it is something that um, we're trying to figure out better ways to kind of constrain both the amount of time and the unpredictability of the amount of time that it kind of takes. Um, our older city infrastructure is maintained by Public Works. We have a really great electrician um, who's become really adept at, at maintaining our older infrastructure that we own, um, but the, the charters that we don't own, he doesn't work on. Um, so that's kind of a, a future thing that we're thinking about for any new stations that we might get in the future, thinking about different ways we would structure the contracts, um, different ways we might work with other city departments to kind of own or operate that infrastructure and things that other cities, that cities collectively are kind of trying to figure out how do we healthily do this to provide this infrastructure? Because it's like, you know, gas stations are not maintained by the government, right? Like there's like businesses who maintain these things. Um, EV chargers, there's gonna need to be way more EV chargers than there are gas pumps because they take longer. We do wanna maintain this as a service for the public. The public in Palm Springs has become very accustomed to our public chargers. Um, and so I think figuring out that right balance of like, what is the role of private enterprise versus government? One of the age old questions. Um, but so that's kind of a bit of a bit of a pickle we find ourselves in with these. So I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet, but I'm trying to figure out where it is. <laughs> um, so you, you have to actually deal with them every day? Um, uh, some weeks it's every day. Um, many weeks it's like once a week, once or twice a week in terms of. So they just don't charge, or really? yeah, we'll get broken components. Um, you know they'll they'll flip offline. We'll have like an issue with a software thing, or somebody will have to come out and fix it. So we've got to like turn it off and you know comb them off and just different things. Yeah. That doesn't seem like the best use of your time. No, I would say it's a. I'm a pretty expensive person to be doing this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, like in terms of just like the hourly rate, um, <laughs> relatively expensive. Um, so um, I think there are a few reasons why I'm kind of the natural fit to do this. Mm -hmm. But I think this also ties back into some of the conversations that we've had as a group where, where when we talk about new things, I'm pretty hesitant to our, for our team taking on a lot of new operational things because it limits our flexibility to do things like transportation surveying or doing a new program for building energy efficiency or dealing with water use regulations or you know the the new things that come up often um so we're working on like building in for all new things that we do those good long-term partnerships like christian is doing a great job with the work he's doing on trees and shade and really working with the departments so we can embed that work into the departments and christian doesn't have to become 
the person who decides what we do about all the trees. Um, which is not really not really what we want to do. Um, so that would be another thing. What does the contract say between the city and this third party? Because it should be a section of maintenance mm -hmm. and your response mm -hmm. time. Is that in there? So it's not in there as specifically as we've learned it should be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so there, so the contract is relatively general um, in terms of um, because we don't, so we also don't really have the ability to like withhold payment for slow response because we don't pay for them. Yeah. Um, so this is, we don't really have like, excellent we don't have excellent leverage in this contract to kind of get the outcomes that we want also when the contract was written there weren't industry standards for charger uptime that now exist so the federal government did us a real solid about a month ago no longer than that almost a year ago at this point um where they basically stated they basically set the floor for what is acceptable ev charger uptime which they set at 97 percent um which is still like percent of the year for a charger to be down it's kind of a long time but that now this that didn't exist when we wrote this contract, so there is no floor for charger performance in the contract. Um, there's basically just kind of like your support can come out within three days, but then you know they come out in two days and they're like, we don't know what's wrong, like you know, kind of restructure the plot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, I've learned a lot of things about how we would restructure our future contract. Okay. Based on this one, and I we may end, end up trying to renegotiate it, um, but I don't know if it's worth it at this point. But I'm happy to do also a more in-depth presentation on this in the future if anybody would like us to kind of dig into this a little bit more and or brainstorm on it. When does the existing contracts up for renewal or for discussions? Ten-year agreement starting in 2020. So oh, I would imagine 2020. Yeah, we, oh. we got a ways. Question. The I guess it's question or comment. Mm -hmm. Have you presented this to our city staff, which is the big boss? This is I have. Yeah, we've been talking about this over the past, and so that's actually why I've been doing a lot of the outreach to other cities as well, is just to be like, what kind of soup are we all collectively in? Are we in a bad soup here, or is everyone in a bad soup? Because I think that kind of would inform how we might address it, is, you know, is there a better alternative, and we just kind of maybe made some tactical errors, or is there not really an apparent new alternative? And there's some iteration, there's some variations on the theme, but nobody's really nailed this yet, I think is what I'm figuring out. But yes, we have talked about it with the city manager a little bit. Though you do have, you were stating you also have a management, uh, part, part maintenance that can actually work on the old ones, but not the new ones. Correct. <clears throat> so that's two different companies that are actually bringing those in? Or just the one company. We have well, we have the so we have the one company that we have the contract with. The right. older stations that we own are made by a different manufacturer. Okay, so the contract that's on the new stuff mm -hmm. that <clears throat> the maintenance doesn't understand. Well, it's not that they don't understand it. It's just that it's different equipment, and we they don't we don't own it, so we're not having our our staff work on it because it's not our own equipment. I don't think it's so, it's sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I think there's probably enough interest to get a more in depth presentation yes. yeah. of it. Okay. And yeah, then, sure. in the interest in the of time. time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yes. I know I have not been following the advice of our astute timekeeper here, and I apologize. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, how about January? I bring it back. Yep. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, everyone, for indulging on that. Any other questions on the memo in general? Oh, that's good. Okay, cool. That's great. Should we move on to the next thing? Yes, so the next thing would be new business. Um, so with this, we this first one is establishing any new airport subcommittee. Awesome. Um, Commissioner Ratner, would, are you able to jump in? Yeah, can you hear me? You can, we can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> okay, great. Sorry about the snafu earlier. Um, so I think you just took the agenda away. We're talking about uh, the discussion we had at our Subcommittee meeting about um, creating an ad hoc subcommittee uh, on regarding water. That's correct. Um, and so I, I, at that uh, scour meeting, we decided we would bring it to the full commission to um, seek interest um, if anyone's interested in joining or working on creating a, a sub. Uh, ad hoc committee or whatever we want to call it. And um, I, I brought this up because I think water's conservation and everything water is important. And I think I have a lot of uh, interest in certain topics, but um, I think it would be, I think we agreed at the meeting, it would be of interest to kind of 
see if there's interest and then kind of create um, some goals and lay out for, uh, for moving forward. Um, so I, I don't know how we, we go around the room and see who's, who might be interested in. Uh, sure, yeah, I think Commissioner Barrett has something he wants to add as well. So go ahead, Commissioner. I was just going to uh, explain why Scour decided to boot it back up to uh, the commission uh, because we felt that it may be interest of enough other people that we would run into partly because we've run into problems with the Brown Act in terms of them being able to, if it was within Scour, it would be hard to have that many people involved in it. So that was one of the primary reasons to boot it back up to the main commission as to whether or not we want to make it a standing subcommittee after we figure out what it's going to do. So so the main question is to create an ad hoc committee that helps figure out what it might do. And so, uh, sorry, go ahead. So apparently the Desert Water Agencies have an academy, and I plan on going to it. So I think I'd like to get involved in it and have a subcommittee. Hopefully I'll learn enough so I can be. Oh. Um, and yeah, so I guess basically we, you know, now that we've got Commissioner Alexander on board, we can have up to five people involved here. Um, so I guess we can kind of just do sort of a straw poll to see. I mean, we've got Commissioner Rotner, obviously, who's interested. So thank you for uh, stepping up to suggest that. So we've got Commissioner Alexander, who's mentioned it. Commissioner Barrett, are you raising your hand so that um, Commissioner Bird? Sorry, I'm going to turn your last name. That's right. I was like, hey, Commissioner Mack. <laughs> um, uh, that's very cool. Um, okay, and then, and we can also, we can go above five and then kind of like wiggle down, you know, if, if more than, I want to make sure everybody who might be interested has an opportunity to, to state that interest. So we've got that four, three, four, four, four. four. Okay. Do we have anybody else who is interested in this one? I'm interested, but mm -hmm. I'll be on the... On the fringe? Okay. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, I know you're you're one of our leading subcommittee members, and I appreciate your generosity. <laughs> yeah, full time job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there anyone else who's interested at this time? Looks okay. like a good five. Okay, cool. So we've got our five. Um, so let me just make sure I've got everybody. So Commissioner Walker, Commissioner Alexander, Commissioner Frick, Commissioner Barrett, Commissioner Rotner. That's our five. Okay. Um, then I will defer, and I can reach out to the commissioners um, independently, so we can get a sense of what might be a good time to meet. Um, to start to discuss what, what the subcommittee might look like and what the goals might be. Yeah, not my only question, and others at the table may know this, is to whether or not we have to publish the agenda on this and make it a public meeting. I don't know the answer right away. Does anyone else know the answer? I would assume that probably. As an, as an ad hoc, and maybe we don't. I, I mean, since it's we a... We might need to check with... I can check if nobody knows. I don't think we ever did in the past. We had a lot of ad hoc subcommittees. Okay. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Let me just confirm that. Yes. Um, but I will I'll get an answer for the group. Thank you for the question. I would I was just assuming we would go on the same formal schedule. Okay. Any other water questions on, on the on the subject? Okay. Oh, okay. And then we're on to the apple. Yes. Indeed. Okay, um, so I'm going to go back over to our world's well, biggest file <clears throat> and scroll down a little bit here. Um, okay, so um, I trust that everyone has memorized the 75 page document. Um, it's going to be a lot faster. Um, okay, so the, so the reason why I'm talking about this right now is twofold. So, um, and I want to also turn to commissioners here fairly soon to share also their involvement and experience with this process so far. So as we've mentioned a little bit in past meetings, the airport is in the middle of a federally mandated schedule of an every 20 year master plan. So every 20 years, the FAA requires that airports submit a new master plan for what the next 20 years are going to look like. Um, they are, uh, they look both at sort of terminal and then also airfield. Um, basically, the main goal of the master plan is to look at what is the projected growth in traffic, what is the existing traffic, how do those, how are those things projected to change over time, and what are the changes that need to happen in the airport in order to accommodate all of that traffic. Um, they do um, they rely on some estimates that are provided by the FAA. Um, so some of this happens kind of on a federal level in terms of their projections of sort of the nationwide market. But some of this also is data that's generated from the airport. Um, they have a consulting team, which I believe is Mead and Hunt, um, who are the main consultant on this process. 
who bring together obviously lots of SEP consultants. They look at everything from economic indicators. Um, they were also looking at climate indicators this year. So they did look at things like some of our, um, our vulnerability assessment and other things to maybe potentially understand how, um, how travel to Palm Springs may change or grow in the future. Um, they're looking at things like, you know, are there more year round residents? Are there more, you know, seasonal events, different things. Um, basically what there, there's sort of two main takeaways that have come out from the projections on the airport. One is that the airport is severely under capacity for the people who are already coming through. Um, so the airport is designed for about 75% of the passengers that they're getting on a peak day. Um, so you, if you've flown through Palm Springs airport on Thanksgiving Sunday or, you know, any, or lately, um, you may be noticing this is like, don't go to sit, get a little thrown in different places. Um, so they're, they're currently, and they're currently doing a lot of juggling in terms of where they can even park planes at term. Um, their projections are that passenger traffic, they have a few different scenarios, which I believe are also in this document in terms of the passengers that they're anticipating. They're saying that they could go up to double annual, the annual number of passengers. Um, so I think they're at roughly 3 million annually a year. They call it implainments, which I think is a fun little word. Um, and they're projecting that by the end of that master planning period, they could see up to 6 million annual appointments, um, which is basically means the airport has to more than double in terms of its gate capacity because we're already undersized for the traffic that's currently coming based on those estimates, which are which follow FAA prescribed projections for how to project these things. Obviously, these methods, you know, weren't just invented this year. They have existed for a while there. You can have different thoughts on how they incorporate climate data, etc. Um, but they, you know, there is some level to it that's incorporated, but this is like a relatively standard process that they can follow. Um, so in order to accommodate all of those things, they also have a few other constraints on the airport site. So one of which is the historic Wexler terminal. So the historic site is basically what you see in this dark blue here on each of these four diagrams. Um, so because that is a protected historic structure, they can't make significant changes to it. Mm -hmm. Just as a non-Palm mm -hmm. Springsy person here, yeah. is that the... Tenty bit. No, you right? would think it was because that's what I thought, but, but it's not. It's actually just the front entrance. Um, oh, so it's the kind of winged section at the very front that you see. Um, the tenty bit in the back is called the Bono Congress, which is not a protected historic structure, but is a beloved structure. Um, so you'll see that a few of these alternatives do include it in the potential future. Um, but it's not a protected historic structure, so they they would theoretically be allowed to demolish. Okay, that sounds good. Yep. Fun facts about your partner. Yeah. Um, the reason I know so much about this, as an aside, is because I've been a member of the airport master plan subcommittee. So there's a few city staff. So it's me, um, engineer, the city engineer, um, a number of airport staff, um, like one of our IT leads, because there's a lot of information technology and communications implications here. Um, and then also members of some, uh, some of the members of the airport commission have been part of the subcommittee or like a committee that has met to inform the development of this process. Um, we've met three times. Um, we basically get these documents a little bit before the commission does. We review them. We get feedback. Most of my feedback is, would be great if less flights, question mark. Um, but, you know, this since this is also kind of a, a prescribed process, there's not really a world in which you go and tell the FAA that we're not going to do planes. Um, like that's, so that, that's kind of just, just to give you some context for what actually comes out of this process. That doesn't mean that they have to do everything exactly as written here, but they're just in time. Um, the other feedback that I've provided is around, um, you know, thinking about adaptive reuse as much as possible, thinking about minimizing how people are getting to the airport in terms of cars, um, et cetera. So like, how can we have things like bus or transit hubs? How can we have, you know, EV charging prioritized, minimize the amount of parking? Um, so we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but a lot of what you'll see here is based on relatively standard, you know, maths for how you might size an airport. So there's four alternatives listed here. Um, each of them you will see has the little winged Wexler, um, whether it's kind of in the terminal or not, kind of depends on the alternative. Um, the two terminal alternatives that were preferred by the broader airport team and all of the bodies uh, at play are alternative 1A, which is here in the top left, and alternative 3, which is in the bottom right. Um, an easy way to understand the difference between these two terminals is alternative 1A maximizes reuse of the existing terminal. Alternative 3 builds a new terminal. So these are kind of the two different questions here. Um, you'll notice that both of them have a big yellow. Can anyone guess what the big yellow is? Parking. Correct. 
parking. This is all parking that is uh, proposed for the airport. I believe this is proposed also in some areas as multi-story. <laughs> um, this orange area is what they call a con rack, which is a consolidated rental car facility, um, which the goal there, I think, is to bring the rental car operations all onto airport property as opposed to having some of these little doodads that kind of are back over there. Um, there's also somewhere in here, they have like a customs, like a foreign inspection station, FIS is what they call it. Um, and then these like lighter blue sections are new terminal that's proposed and the green sections are outdoor space. Does anyone have any questions on the diagrams that's written? I just sure have a yeah, go follow question slash comment. So with all these lots, mm -hmm. and I've been a victim of this, if you're in a access lot, mm -hmm. would you have to go back to pick up a passenger? So all of the... Good question. So that is, that actually, I don't have an immediate answer to that question because of one of the limitations of this master planning process. So one of the things to remember about the master plan is that it's, there are a lot of operational considerations that will then follow the development of this master plan. So there's a lot of things around like, how would we build the building? How big should it be? You know, where should we put the bus? Where should we put like a lot of those things? Um, unless it's like pretty much just allocating a major roadway or allocating like roughly how much parking you might need there there could still be pretty significant variation in terms of like where the parking actually is after the master plan is done so i think a lot of those things would probably still need to be worked out is it because clearly now it's it's not good yeah it's, sure yeah you gotta go the, the other, a long way <laughs> yeah well and the, the thing is we all converge like at thanksgiving we all converge mm -hmm. in one single spot right cars were you know running yep yeah totally thing. the other issue Again, depending on how many lots they have, is the payment for the parking should be essential spot because now it's they're all separate. Yeah, and I think a lot of those uh, improving the flow of people and objects through the airport, I think, is a goal of the master plan. Um, that I don't know if I have a ton of information on. Yeah, because it's hard to tell. Yeah. Right, and I think that's I think that's kind of intentionally because yeah. a lot of those things will be worked out later. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what, I, yeah. that, what is Conrad again? Uh, consolidated rental car thing. I don't remember yeah. Yeah. what the, all the individual letters stand yeah. for, but it's the, it's the consolidated rental car facility. And it's multi level. Multi level. Yeah. I believe they're planning for this to be a number of stories here. Four or five. Um, question? It is four. It's four. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate can remember which of the F numbers it was. Um, okay. So. I'm going to keep going just a little bit. I don't have that much more than I want to say. Um, so you all, I think, had a chance to kind of just browse through some of these specifics here. Both of the preferred alternatives do have roughly the same number of gates. Um, the same number of gates. Gate, gate. mm -hmm. um, there are different phases in which this would be constructed as well, because it's going to be really expensive to do this. Mm -hmm. um, I think initially when they presented the four alternatives, they thought that this adaptive reuse would be significantly less expensive. Um, it turns out that it's actually probably going to cost not that much less than kind of building the new thing. And so that, because that kind of comes down to the question of, do you build something new from the ground up that is, you know, maybe net zero, lead certified, brand new systems that all work together, or do you kind of work within the existing things? So you're not having additional embodied carbon. You're not, you know, bringing a ton of new constructed materials, but you're working within the constraints of an aging building mm -hmm. that may already be presenting some problems. So I think these are the kind of two questions in the airport when they're looking at these two alternatives and when I'm kind of putting on my sustainability hat in the context of this process, which, like I said, you know, there's my there's my broader umbrella sustainability recommendation, but then there's sort of also the sustainability recommendation within the context of this framework, which is how do we maximize carbon reductions, you know, from people getting to and from the airport, how do we maximize or, or maximize carbon reductions from any construction, and how do we maximize uh, carbon reductions from future operations. So those are kind of my three things that I'm focusing on. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think at, at this level of analysis, and then just so you have a sense of what I understand to be going on in the future. So the airport commission, I believe, is meeting in Eric tomorrow. Um, I know Commissioner Graham has been keeping tabs on this, so I'll also turn to you here in a second just to kind of share what you've been seeing and what your thoughts are. Mm -hmm. um, they do have an open com public comment process. They are having a meeting tomorrow where they're taking a commission, which I believe is a non-binding recommendation, but a recommendation right. on the terminal alternative that should be prioritized the most. 
Um, then the team is moving in parallel to, um, they're doing kind of the same type of analysis on the tarmac or like what they call air side. So they have to look at like how much space is there in runways, is there enough? Like, do we need more space to do maintenance or fire station or like other things that they do? Which I'm a little bit less involved in that because it's more about allocating existing space and less about making changes. So my focus has been mostly on the terminal land side operations, um, but they will spend another couple of months looking at the air side and then they'll come back um, and I believe do another round of public outreach once everything is kind of said and done toward the end. Um, I believe I also included a link somewhere, I think, um, to where they have their existing public comment portal um, where you can still submit um, like emails through their public site. Maybe I didn't do that. Okay. I don't, I I'll make sure that. that we, yeah, I'll make sure that we talk about that before the end. Probably probably <laughs> yeah. um, I will pause there for any other questions, but I also would like uh, for Commissioner Graham or any other commissioners who've been checked in on this process to share mm. their feedback so far. And then I'll turn it over to the commission and decide what you want to do this week. Her on last conversation, I think you just nailed it. <laughs> because those were the exact things that I looked at and thought in the meeting that I went to thereafter, there's really almost no recommendations that we can actually make at this present time other than taking in the knowledge for us the next six months till they figure out which which one they're gonna go to. And your question was exactly that, is exactly how those they're going to be designed. They don't know yet. We're not really sure where how that's all going to play out. Also, we don't know exactly until we can't make decisions that are, as a committee or help them make decisions uh, until they actually get this process nailed down. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm looking at it going, hmm, there's nothing really we can do. I think as an economics things, yes. If we were thinking dollar amounts, the sustainability is like, okay. I would say there's a lot we can do once we get to <laughs> how this gets implemented. So I think whatever sort of my approach has been leading with principles on kind of the things that I said, like maximize carbon reduction mm -hmm. from the construction, maximize carbon reduction from operation, maximize carbon reduction from transportation, mm -hmm. um, making sure we continue to embed those principles so that those become embedded then into the you know the bid for construction and design services for the new terminal or terminal additions right. or you know how they're thinking about actually implementing the parking. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is a you know wishful thinking, um, but that's kind of how I've been handling it. But right. I'm curious to hear. If I just think it's, it's our visibility within that sure. the whole thing is actually going to be major. Sure. Yeah. Making to... sure that that's a key and that is yeah. so they've been evaluating sustainability is a key yeah. vector that's been evaluated on each of these. I would say. Nobody really knows exactly how to evaluate this on sustainability yet, but they've been looking at kind of some of those similar metrics on that front. Um, I have Commissioner Clark and then Commissioner Drew. Could you scroll to that chart that discusses the sustainability? Yes, I can. I have to remember what page it's on. If anybody knows off the top of their head. It's toward the end. Yeah, it's way to the end. Got it. Oh, okay. sorry. We're going, going. All right, let me zoom out a little bit. There it is. <clears throat> it's uh, 73. 73? Do you want to just type in 73? I can do that. Thank you. Yeah. Very, thank you. Mm -hmm. Better than scrolling. Mm -hmm. um, is it? There's a, a long list of sustainability yeah. points. Is it above this? Uh, I, below. I think it's below. This one? Yeah. yeah. That's a good timeline. I mean, that doesn't look like a chart. Let me scroll up just a little bit to see if there's something here. But if you want to keep going or if anybody has a question while I'm doing the scrolling, please feel free also to jump in the field. Yeah, that was a different presentation. Okay. Yeah, no, this is, I think that's not like a I'm just gonna do a quick pull up. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to really find this in the document. Well, yeah, I guess we don't. Yeah, I think they have everything like water, air. No, yeah, I know what chart you're talking about. I just don't know where There's it is. There's a long list of things, and I think almost at the end. A lot of them were very yeah. good. I think the I expect that we'll be spending time in the um, climate action subcommittee talking about the airport as oh, well. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's it. There we go. Um, okay. But you know, they mentioned things like oh, that was, uh, um, I can't even read it. Sorry, I'm going to zoom in. I just have to wait for the zoom toolbar to go away. I thought you were trying. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> and. How long is it expected it will take? It's about a year long process. To well, to do the renovation. Um, so I think it depends on what 
phasing they choose. Um, because it's a 20 year plan, I think they're thinking about phasing over that period. I would imagine they'd probably front load some stuff in the first five years though. So it could take a long time, but um, transportation alternatives where it says improves access to public transportation and consider on-site electric vehicle charging encourages travelers to use low carbon transportation options. I think that's good, but the, the airport's not isolated in terms of that. It's gonna depend upon what else is going on in the city. So that provides us opportunities as a commission, as we're trying to look at transportation alternatives in, in the city, how they would interface with people going to and from the airport. Sure. And that, yeah, that gives us an opportunity to meet them at that high level of ambition. That's right. And and over that 20 year period, there's going to be different technologies. And so what, what's decided today for transportation may not be relevant in five years. Sure. Great one. Also, Gloria, I might be able to answer part of a part of a question. Um, um, phase the, the, the alternative one, and all going through the four phases, they would say it would take a little over three years. Mm -hmm. Phase mm -hmm. alternative three would take six years out of five different phases, I do believe, or uh, mm -hmm. five different phases. <clears throat> Some of the feedback that I've gotten from people that I've spoke to about and other projects that are actually going on at the same time, you know, theater, library, warehouse, the city management changes, things like that, districts, the whole thing. The three-year plan is actually, it's a lot of money, but a lot of people are actually going towards a three-year plan, but then other people are actually saying we need the six-year plan in order for the inter the additional international flights to come in and the additional terminals because they're going to be short terminals until they can finish out those others in the six-year plan if, we, if they go with the, the three-year plan. I think there's a little bit of a struggle, and I guess there was kind of a somewhat of, but there was a boat within and they both became out the same in their vote within their commission last, last yeah. week. So they, they're they right now going back with these and looking at it. So, so it could be as soon as three years or, or, or six years. One three years or six years before they get all the way to that other phase, alternative three to phase five. And Commissioner Jody. That was my question, actually. Oh, it, was, oh, it was about the sorry. timeline. Yeah. Oh, we're sorry. Not, we're not going to be able to make the recommendations or anything because mm -hmm. uh, until then we figure but well, I wanted to know about the timeline right. between each either 1A or 3 because oh, that's sure. yeah. Yeah. you know what's the timeline between um, 1A and what's the difference sure. between the two yeah I think thanks for summarizing pressure ground because I think that three may be like even more information than I have at this point yeah. I think there is also there will need to be probably some like bonding and like uh, money raised to do this work as well so that may indicate when that plan would start yeah. Uh, from what? All right. All right. Here we go. I told you meant it. <laughs> Just said, is it, it that three versus six? Was that dependent on which design or either design could be three years or six years? That's the two different designs. That is the two different so designs. One, so, 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 one A is three years. Right. Maybe a little more, depending on the funding and everything gets into place. <clears throat> the other one, three out of the, and the five phases would be actual six years okay, no, that's what with I, additional, I just depending on money and uh, the raising and stuff like that. That's their, they're not saying exactly six years, could be more, right. or exactly I three years, it could be more. They're all, they're leaving a little bit of a window in that, I can tell. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure those two were connected that way. Yeah. So in the interest of time, if we uh, carry on with that on the next one, and then yes. move on. If we're gonna oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I guess the quick question is, is there any, so is there anything the commission wants to do at this time, or any further questions that the commission has at this time? I think I have a suggestion, because this is going to be a 20-year plan, and I want to consider the sustainability commission, how are we looking at the neighborhood surrounding the airport? Mm -hmm. The air traffic is going to increase. Uh, air is going to be more polluted. There is going to be more noise. So when we are doing this energy efficiency survey right now, are we going to suggest the 
houses around the airport, hey, get a triple plane paint window because airport is going to be extended in the next 20 years. Mm. There's not going to be more noise. So you need more soundproof. So I want to just think as a commission for us to like, what is the impact on the city as a whole and the immediate neighborhoods? And how can we address those issues or the new changes that we are going to implement should include those things in mind and say, we have suggestions for these. Thank you for that. And I will note that the next round of public outreach, I think especially once they do more of the air side analysis, I believe is going to talk a little bit more about like the noise contours and things like that. So that's a good time for us to bring that back up. Um, so I will apply for the commission when I next get material about that. So that way we'll have kind of a heads up that that's coming. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Just a brief comment, several years ago, um, LAX funded window upgrades for neighborhoods near the airport there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One okay. brief thing. Yes. There are studies that they're presently doing also right now in reference to those things right. and also um, wildlife. Um, that's all happening at once. They're literally doing that right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's all whole, that's kind of it's all moving in parallel. It's all moving at the same time. They're, yeah. they're moving forward. I can. Any other recommendations for next steps? Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. I a question. All right. So when are it, is the next position for them to decide between 1A and 3, or is that still down the road also? I believe they're making an advisory recommendation on tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, for the are, airport commission yes. between 1A and 3. But they're going to take a vote tomorrow. I vote for 1A. Uh, well. <laughs> so I guess that's the question is, does the commission want to like write a public comment that you all want to deliver at that meeting? And this is me being in, I have no skin in this game and this is not my role. I'm just trying to lay out the options of things you can do. <laughs> you, could, you could make a public comment, you could email a comment. Um, you could save a public comment for the next round. There's a number of different things that you could do, um, given kind of what we've discussed. Well, given kind of what we discussed, and there's no hard and fast details mm -hmm. yet. We're probably better off waiting before we just you know, dive in and go to this sure. and then yeah. we have to change. Yeah. Right. Oh. Totally agree. Yeah. If you're interested, watch tomorrow's meeting, yeah. basically Zoom and be a, a bystander. You'll forget a lot of information. We can right. still, you can still do public comment. Right. public comment. Great. That sounds good. So no, no further action needed at this time. And then we'll revisit this maybe at the next meeting and if anybody wants to report out on one there. Does that work? Okay. okay. And then that'll be on to old business. Great. So before we move to old business, I think now is a good time for a quick break. A little bit about like five minute break. Um, I will lead any group who needs to go through the to the badge to the restroom. Um, one activity I would like you to cons uh, con consider. You will see here we have our sticky note board. Um, this is intended to kind of allow us to continue to replicate the prioritization exercise we did a couple of meetings ago. So if there are topics that you're either really wanting on a future agenda, please put them up there and just note, like put an F on it for future. Um, and if there's another topic that's just a high priority for you, but you don't necessarily know what you want to do with it yet, stick it on the board. We have stickies and markers. So that's what you can do to stretch your legs if you don't need to come to the restroom. I will remind everyone that the Zoom remains running and recording. Um, so <laughs> do that what you will. So it is 6.58. We'll come back at 7.03 if I did the math right. Okay. <laughs> You mentioned that you're taking the water pounds at that. Yeah, have you done it? I took it actually the first time they ran it. It was very good. Yeah, I'm sure they made a lot of changes. Yeah, I thought it was. We went on a tour. You know, they have the tours and that was just. Yeah, I've been on one, I've been on one of those yeah. too. Yeah. And so I signed up for the spring ones. And then because of that, they sent me the things saying, oh, we're having this academy. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it'll educate me enough so I get on this water mm -hmm. so yeah. make a kind of intelligent contribution. So, so how long have you been in the board? I was on um, I was on for you know, no, what we wasn't it the last from meeting from that we had that we uh, wanted a pet pose. Wow. And I got to the reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get time off and and I had already many months ago come to her back. Oh, but Oh, doing, I mean, it's a lot. Kind of yeah. And when you were being on those meetings, so I sat in and council, just, uh, 
the yeah. commission is not responding. I'm sorry. And so I, I thought we needed to have a louder voice. And, and they also had four new commissioners. Uh, yeah. And, and I they had to enlarge it because of because I watched the last city so, council meeting. Uh, they had four new commissioners and they had out there you know, on the, the director, the assistant director, uh, I actually drove by there to kind of check out the room. Was full. I looked at that and I said, What? I'm not sure why they, I think yeah. Starbucks, at the airport somewhere, yeah, so wants to be able to have people drive. I guess that would be a question for my come in and drive in because yeah. it's a real yeah. weird looking. Where do they meet? Yeah, where do they meet? There's a conference room. If you go in the main entrance, uh -huh. there's like a little staircase uh -huh. off to the left. Uh -huh. If you go up, it's uh -huh. there's a room right at the top of that staircase. I thought it was. You do realize that was the same oh, we, day we, that I was hard sick and we couldn't make what we were doing. Oh no, I made the meeting. Remember? Right? Yeah, you were on the Zoom. I'm on the Zoom. Because I know you guys mixed up. I had the flu. Sitting on the other end of the meeting, but I sat in on one. The crunch was really going around that week. Yeah, and I had been thinking about it because that's always the thing. There's so much going on, you can't keep up with anything. So I'm glad I watched the meeting go on. You know about this. Um, my plan see, is to go. Be, and I'm not, I since that's my neighbor, yeah. that could be I'm the kind of thing if it wasn't oh, driving. Well, yeah. Yeah, not yet. It's not even more education. It's a but perfect place for people to gather. You have spoken. You know, but it's yeah, they are small, but the same. They, they are reaching. They are one of the. They have all those studies that they're doing yeah. in their own place. Yeah, they're that, all moving. Yeah, they're all moving very well. It's all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a very rapid yeah. process. Whole block is except for the Del Taco, and you know over the next five or so years there could be a lot more um, residential buildings there, and it could be more walkable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. I'd like to see that. And sorry, this would this would just wouldn't preclude it, but it just wouldn't be consistent with doing that. Yeah. Well, I think that the conception of marijuana the kids didn't take so long for them to build. I emailed you know, the email. I just saw it. 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 I just Thank you. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, so that right from 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 right the one of the trees that they don't have, yeah. have yeah. a picture that you can actually see is that building on the top. They have the phase one where it's over here, the 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 but they don't have it in phase three. And I think I know why. I think there's maybe another hundred is because more it is the goal. Here, the mm -hmm. goal of Alternative one. I feel that one second. Five and six maybe that energize that corner. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Intersection looks a lot better. I mean, does that sound like time we spend on the job? Yeah. Oh, you got the other one? Yeah. This is not the three. Yeah. And now it's making that corner. As I learned, I looked at it. Exactly. I'm going to drive by and look at it. I don't like the top. A lot of people don't. But with the master plan, it doesn't that they say that they've got to have for the plan. Yeah. 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 So, so, so it's not. not. Okay. Okay. Thing, right? okay. So okay. that's where people are going. Uh, like, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we will allow Christian to to trickle back in so we can keep us moving. Okay. Um. All right. So we're on to old business. We get to go, Chair. Uh. Yeah. So. Um, cool. So I will start this next little section with an apology. I was going to create a calendar for everybody and add in who had expressed interest in uh, being the liaison to different commissions at our last meeting, but I didn't. Um, so we're going to do it a little differently. And I apologize for not doing that. Um, so, I'm sorry. Um, so I know we were down a few numbers at our last meeting, so I think now it's also probably a good time to like revisit this conversation. So something we've talked about in some of our previous meetings 
is that there are a lot of other commissions that operate in the city that do things that are related to sustainability. Some are very obvious. So for example, Desert Water, we've already had them come in to visit us, it's very related. Um, you know, Desert Community Energy, very related. Um, you know, parks, we've already had them come in to visit about shade structures, you know, lots of different things. So I've made a list here of the different committees, um, and I apologize that I didn't update this slide because I know 1PS should not be here under city commissions, and I this I just pulled up the agenda packet from the last meeting really quickly. Um, and so I, I, I know, I know we'll fix it next time. Um, and wanted to just kind of review who had raised their hands to be the liaison, and this is kind of an unofficial liaison, um, basically who's going to kind of keep their ear out for what's going on in these different groups. So for example, like we're hearing about the airport, um, Commissioner Graham kind of plugging into some of those meetings, um, and, and reporting back, um, you know, based on the stuff that we talked about with planning last time, you know, keeping an ear up for that. Um, so wanted to quickly review um, who might be interested in kind of plugging into some of these, who's already plugged into some of these. Um, I know Commissioner Derry, you're already kind of involved in some of the stuff going on with parks related to the pickleball, you know, that kind of stuff, or shade structures there. Um, so wanted to kind of just rerun this conversation and, you know, with the people who'd already set themselves in some of these places, see if anybody else, you know, we don't have a limit on the number of people who can do these things. So if there's a few people who are interested in one topic, that's great. Um, but, uh, and if there's also other ones, um, and yes, thanks Commissioner Rotner just wanted to read out that water and planning commissioner or water and planning are the things that Commissioner Rotner raised to stand for. Um, and start, starting after the holiday, he will be attending those meetings to report out. Um, though I will also note for Commissioner Rotner Sanity, those are two of the ones that meet the most often. So if anybody wants to back him up on a couple of notes, I'm sure he might not mind a second. Um, what else do these commission? Where do they meet? What's that? Where do these commissions meet again? Good question. So any of the ones that are city commissions, please ignore one PS, not a city commission. Any of the city commission ones meet in this room. Um, and they will also have the Zoom simulcasts. Um, Desert Water meets at their headquarters, which is on G Not Three, like a little bit south of Ramon. It's like south of where that shopping center is. Right. Um, like on G Not Three, kind of headed toward South Palm. Um, and CVAG, they meet in Palm Desert um, at the CVAG headquarters, but I believe they now have a Zoom. Yeah. Um, Desert Community Energy usually meets in the Police Training Center, which is across the street, but they don't meet every month. Actually, One, they, actually they usually meet here. They just yeah. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Uh, order, yeah, thanks for the reminder because they couldn't get this room. So normally they need it here. Um, and then 1PS, which we already have a number of people who are involved in, so we may not need a separate 1PS liaison, but they meet in the police training center across the street. So most of these meetings are going to be here, um, with the exception of the sort of outside entities. The one that I did not put on here is Sunline, um, which is the public transit agency. Um, which has a number of different potentially relevant meetings because they're quite a large agency. Those meet, they meet in thousand palms. Um, but I didn't know which of their meetings would be most relevant for this group, so I didn't add it yet. Is there anyone interested in joining the planning for, for any of the other commissions? I mean, we'll, maybe we can kind of just go down the list really quickly, unless yeah. anyone has um, any. I'm already on to them. So you think <laughs> you're on the air, oh, sorry. airport? One conversation at a time. Makes it easier for the notes. Yeah. <laughs> so you, it, 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 you're signing up to go to every one of the commission meetings. I would say that, as many as you kind of can, and this yeah. is, and this is kind of up to the commission, I guess, yeah. to decide. Actually, I actually, I'm not going to answer that question. I'm going to let the commission answer okay. that question for the commission. Well, you know, I'm already at one PS, so sure. that's one. But I'm, I'm interested in parks, but I know it meets a lot. So. Yeah. Okay. So with the planning committee, I guess you could have one commissioner go on the second, one on the fourth. What it doesn't say what time that is. Oh, sorry. Yeah. All of the city commissions are at five thirty p.m. Okay. On those days. Um, Commissioner Barrett. Yeah, I mean, all of the commissions have to publish their agenda. Correct. So, so you could look at the agenda and say, oh, there's nothing I need to go for this time. Sure, that's true. Yeah, everything should be published at least a week in advance so you could double check. Yeah, I'm already appointed to Desert Community Energy. Right. Someone else can take that if they want. Uh, I sort of know what they're doing. Um, so there's that. And the other, only other one that I think Scour should be when Parks and, should be involved with Parks and Rec in some, in some way. So... And we also have a reminder from Commissioner Rotner that DWA board meets at 8 a.m. on those first and fifth Tuesdays. Sure. <laughs> planning Commissioner. You want to sit on yeah. planning potentially? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Rotner, you have a second from Commissioner Alexander with planning. Um, you know, you often work out 
between yourselves if you want to, you know, more the merrier, or if you want a tag team, <laughs> I'll let y'all handle that because you can one-on-one -on -one conversation that. Anybody else interested in kind of keeping tabs on planning? Commissioner? Uh, Go ahead. The Parks and Rec, mm -hmm. for me, yep. just because sure. I've gotten a little bit more involved with mm -hmm. them a little bit. Cool. Um, airport commission, maybe, okay. but uh, not, I mean, don't remind me. <laughs> no, um, sorry, I was making it in the formal list. Um, so in terms of planning, we have Rotner, Alexander, Parks, Derda, who else is interested in Parks? We got two, three, yeah. okay, we got a whole Parks contingent. Yeah. Who would, who would like, oh, you not you, okay, I thought you raised your hand for Parks, okay. You, so, say, you, you say airport, state time, oh. I, I'm, I'm planning, I'm sorry. Okay, it's already sorry. on planet. Right, right, right. Okay, He's yeah. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with Parks. Uh, so we got Jared Cohen, okay. Barrett. Sorry, I'm going last. No? No, no if you page on it, then. I think we can. Just do a show of hands. <laughs> so if you start the talk. Got Parks. Parks. And Parks. And parks. Yes. Okay, we're going to do Parks and Parks. We've got Cohen and Deirdre for Parks. Great. Sorry, I'm going with last names here. Feels very okay. military like my dad. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to the top, start with the airport. Commissioner Graham, who else is interested in airport? Could you say Could like as a, as a as a as a light second? Yeah, okay. I like like a full I like yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll have What's Commissioner Graham as the primary for the airport. What's your day job? Um, I, IT business analyst. Yeah, I don't want to do too much because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <right. laughs> um, you can tiptoe in. Um, okay, so parks we've got planning. So we've got Commissioner Ratner, Commissioner Alexander. Anybody else who kind of wants to be in the planning universe? Commissioner Grant? Okay. Oh, there's a project that I specifically am working on with planning. Oh, cool. Then that, that you can do all the others. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's that project? Just like a bureaucracy? Theater. Oh, okay, cool. I work with Kathy and JR. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. So you're there. Theater, theater, or? The downtown the plaza. Theater. The, the plaza. Sorry, I just, I just call it theater. <laughs> yeah. um, which actually, that reminds me that there is a commission that I did not list here, which is the Measure J Commission. Um, oh, yeah. So the Measure J Commission um, <laughs> works to uh, like basically determine how the funding is allocated from Measure J, which is the one cent sales tax that is here in the city. So it's funding that goes to a lot of public works projects or public oriented projects. Um, those sustainability projects are able to take advantage of Measure J funding and have in the past. Um, is anyone interested in kind of keeping tabs on Measure J? When are those meetings? So, um, can oh. I ask one of my intrepid team members to quickly look up when the Measure J meeting is? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we'll find out. Just a comment on that. Sure. Several years ago, um, Measure J funded a lot of sidewalks in the yes. city. Great. So that's something that might yeah, be sure. continued. Measure J was um, it's on a Thursday. The last one was on the 14th. All right. So is that so it looks like the uh, <clears throat> would be the second would, would that would be the <laughs> second Thursday of every month. Okay. And is that was that I feel like they meet during the day. They do. Is that like eleven or something? Nine thirty a.m. Okay. So can you just attend the remote yeah, video? Yeah, yeah, you can sit on the Zoom. Yeah, because I'm interested in that. Okay, cool. So we've got Commissioner Frick who is gonna check out measure J three. I'll add that to my list and I'll add that here as well. Um, so public third, third Thursday. Third Thursday. Okay, yeah, I guess the 14th is a tricky one. Yeah, it's like a special meeting. It is. Oh, special meeting. Yeah. That's why they did it. Okay. Right. So generally, it'll be the third Thursday unless they're doing the special meeting. Because they need to do the vote for that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, oh, yeah, because they have to vote for it. So what do you think of the theater, Eric? Just sit on the Sorry, Mr. Frick, it's actually normally 5.30, 5.30, 5.30. Yeah, not 9.30. It's already... And what's Thursday? Uh, third Thursday. Third Thursday. I guess the last meeting was a very special mm -hmm. meeting because they had to do a vote before a city council meeting. Okay. Um, so so I'll be attended to the Zoom. Yeah, be attended. Yeah. yeah. And, I have a um, and also, all these commissions also post their video yes. recordings. Yes. So in case anybody's yes. not able to make the commission yes. itself, you can watch cool. the video. Oh, and that's on YouTube. Correct. Yeah, yeah. that's one. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then meet. They all meet in here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, public arts. Is that something that anybody feels like they want to sit in on in the short term? We will have another discussion about that with regard to shade structures, I think, next month. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to revisit the shade structure conversation with parks at Climate Action next month. So we'll come back to that when we do the Climate Action. I report. put that in my next uh, agenda. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So that. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Put in the future. Uh, yeah. We, we, we talked about it at our last Climate Action meeting. So oh, okay. So good. It will come up. Good. Good. 
and then we'll come back to that. I know Parks and Rec will, will they're working on something, so I wanted to get that proposition going. Um, one PS we already talked about, Commissioners Cohen and Barrett. You guys are part of that already, so yeah. uh, and Commissioner it. Alexander, yeah, sorry. <laughs> So we've got enough one PS coverage. Yeah. Um, desert water. So I know we have Commissioner Rotner. Um, is anyone else interested in kind of keeping an ear out for desert water? I don't think so. Yeah, that's fair. Be well, they do. They do have them on Zoom, so you could just you could dial like dial into the meeting if you want. But eight a.m. I'm kind of working. That's true. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I believe they do post them afterwards. Um, and they also post the agendas as well. So um. Yeah, so if anybody wanted to kind of even just look at the agenda and, and flag for people like, hey, we should look at this one or something. But I know Commissioner Rotner is going to be keeping tabs on that one too. So the maybe measure, the measure J's actually are on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Correct. I've seen them. Yeah. Yes. All the time. Yeah. That's on the couple of them. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll have Commissioner Rotner take the lead on DWA and call in for reinforcements if reinforcements are needed. Does that work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Barrett? Uh, a commission that's not on the list is the Architectural Review Committee. Thank you. And yeah. they are an important part of the planning process. Yeah. Um, and we should probably at least listen. Yeah. Okay. Does uh, anyone, would anyone like to do that? Uh, Commissioner Barrett, are you volunteer? Think, depending on what, if it's 8 o'clock in the morning, I don't get up. No, I believe those are in the, in the evenings as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll continue with. DCE and, okay. and and that I'll double check. Okay, cool. I'll get the date for that for you. Um, and then yeah, we've got DCE, which is the thank you, Commissioner Barrett. And so I'll I'll come back to this in future agenda. DCE's reps do want to come give a presentation to okay, this. Group. I'm not hearing. I'm DCE's representatives do want to give a presentation to this group in January oh, if they can, right. yeah. uh, because they're also going to be, I believe, uh, soliciting additional members from this commission mm -hmm. for the committee that um, Commissioner Barrett is already part of. Yeah. Um, so they, they'll come in, in January to do a presentation if the commission says, okay. They supposedly have two neighborhood representations. That's what it's historically been, and there's only been one doing mm -hmm. it. Got it. So. I mean, there's not a lot that really happens right now. I mean, it, it's it's meetings that are listening to finances of DCE, and that's that's interesting. But okay. So maybe we can revisit to see if anybody else wants to jump on the DCE train. We'll revisit that in January after the meeting. Okay. okay. Um, and then CVAG, I would say, is definitely like something that we keep a tab on at a staff level. Um, you know, if you're interested in kind of the regional approach on climate, it is, it is interesting to hear what they're up to. Um, so if anybody would like to, and I always zoom into those meetings, I don't usually go in person. So if anyone's interested, um, that one is an option from the regional approach. Anyone want to be tagged in for that or not yet? Good. All right, great. Um, I have notes here of what we talked about. I, it's too messy to read right now, but I will send this back out to everybody in the summer. One comment. Yes. One thing that was omitted is mm -hmm. city council. Right. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and, and going along with the comment that was made before, I think it, it's important to know what's going on in the city council. Mm -hmm. And I think with our, our email accounts now, we get pushed out to us the agenda for the meetings. That's quite possible. Yes. And so it's, it's worth taking a look at the agenda for the meetings. And if there's something that you're interested in or basically relates to sustainability, it's worth watching. The good news is you don't have to go and sit there. You can watch the video the next day. Mm -hmm. um, and um, also in real time. Live. 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 Right. Yeah. yeah, you can watch it live or the next, or the next day. But you yeah. don't have to or, stay till 11 as but well. But I, I just like to encourage people to take a look at the agendas and see what might be in, what might be of interest. Uh, architectural review is not. Okay. Uh, it would, I'm playing with the lawyer to see if he could be interested. <laughs> Dana, we could often do He's not, not ready. ready. <laughs> <laughs> we'll so I would say, yeah, why don't, if you want to keep an eye on one or two meetings to see whether you feel like it's something that you should consistently keep an eye on or whether it's something that maybe as is as needed. Because I know they get a pretty different slate of projects every month. Um, or each meeting, so it's hard to predict what it's going to look like on a weekly basis. Okay. Um, does 
does the commission feel like there needs to be a primary person keeping tabs on city council agendas, or is that something that everyone should kind of just do on their own? I think we should sort of do something so that we know somebody who doing it every month. I don't think it should be each. I don't think one of us should be doing it every month. It's really we hope that we if we all sort of I'm saying something and you know if we all volunteer, okay, I'll do it this month, or well, we too will do it this month or something. I do it every month oh, because right. there's all uh, there's always something that that ties in. It's, that's I always do. Sure. No, yeah. <laughs> so I think maybe maybe everyone kind of work on developing the muscle of checking the council agendas. We have two people who already do a pretty good job of that. Um, so I think maybe we'll lean on these two to flag issues until we kind of all get in the rhythm of doing that. Does that sound kind of like a version of what you're suggesting? Um, and then if if it turns out that it needs to have like more of a point person per month, then I think maybe the commission can review that. That's it. Great. Um, then I think this activity is complete. Yep. Um, should we move on to the next thing? Yep, which should be subcommittee and commissioner reports. So we've got the scour. I think we might have skipped a couple things, sorry. Oh. Um, the prioritization exercise and oh, the yeah. ongoing sorry. policy priority. Yeah, no, um, prioritization exercise. So um, Commissioner Barrett, also feel free to chime in because I know this is something you had particularly suggested. I think. <laughs> there was something I missed in here. Casting that. Casting that. Hail Mary. Um, okay, so um, I think that kind of relates to what we're doing here, which I think actually maybe now that I'm thinking about this as we're doing it, as opposed to when I was writing the agenda with the help of the chair and vice chair, maybe we actually revisit this part in the prioritization in commissioner before we do commissioner agenda requests. So I might suggest yep. that we do that. The, but then I will spend a couple minutes talking about ongoing policy priorities and outstanding commission items. And I will do this in timing myself, three minutes um, <laughs> to keep us honest. So I want to make sure that I'm following the same rules. Okay, so there's a couple of things I wanted to just share out on that we've talked about just to make sure you know where they're sitting. Um, but Phil, and most of most of these things are also in the staff comment in some way, but these are particularly things that relate to the commission. So first is the smoking ordinance, um, which we heard our public comment about this evening. So the smoking ordinance is not something that has continued to evolve, but where it is, is basically there is a drafted piece of legislation that the commission worked on over about a two-year period um, with some help from outside, you know, research, you know, American Lung Association, data from Riverside County Health, like, you know, lots of work with different community advocates. There were different commissioners who have been kind of the primary point of contact on it in the past at different times. Um, and the the legislation basically touches on two things, which I think we've talked about briefly in the past, but just as a recap, one is smoking outside in places of business, so like smoking patios, basically. Um, the other is smoking in multifamily dwellings, um, which is currently legally allowed, but individual dwellings can restrict it. So certain apartment complexes can choose to not allow smoking, but they don't have to not allow smoking. Um, there have been some concerns in the past on both fronts. One uh, is concern from the business community around the impact of closing smoking patios, um, because some of those see that as a business driver. Um, though the sort of the, the thing you hear on the other side of that is the impacts of health to staff and other patrons who aren't smoking. So kind of that's the trade-off there. And then there has been a human rights slash inclusion and equity angle on um, restricting smoking in multifamily housing because um, that particularly will burden people who do not own their homes because if you own your house, they, we can't tell you not to smoke in it. Um, you know, that's property rights, I guess. I don't know how that works. But um, so there's kind of like a, a winnowing, uh, shrinking number of spaces where if somebody uh, does make the choice to smoke, that they should be allowed to smoke. Um, so that's been the, the issue that's come up in the past. Um, the city council has not voiced interest in bringing this back up, but is still generally interested in the concept. Basically, what would be needed to carry this forward is probably interest from a commissioner or two who want to particularly lean in and take it forward. Um, the next thing that really needs to happen is conversations with the council members to get an updated sense of what their interest is or concerns are with the legislation. Um, so we're basically kind of operating on slightly stale information, probably about six <laughs> months to a year old in terms of what their primary concerns are. It's worth revisiting that if commissioners wanted to take it forward, but where the legislation is right now kind of is 
it's basically at a parking spot and is pretty much as far as staff can take it without a little bit more interest from commission and council to move it forward. Any questions on smoking ordinance? Yes. Comments? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Would the, the biggest advocate for the ordinance was Councilmember Corse, who's no longer on the council, but also the, the current draft ordinance, uh, actually we considered it final at one point, mm -hmm. was written with the Human Rights Commission as well. Right. And one of the council members, of Mayor Pro Tem de Hart, mm -hmm. was chairperson of the mm -hmm. Human Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. So that might be a, a, a person to talk to sooner rather than later. Sure. Thank you. Um, yes. I was just going to ask that, that is there somebody presently that we could actually speak to? I think we need to have more public input. We, I think as a commission, we need to see uh, other than hype when uh, like a specific venue changes. I think I see now mm -hmm. it, it fizzled out for a while. It was actually talked about, but I think there needs to be more public comment. I've actually had I get both sides at my place of business. We act, we talk about it. I have I go out and ask, what is your opinion? I think we I've got both sides of it. I'm kind of thinking, is it really that important right now in reference to all the other stuff that we are doing as a commission? All right. Any other comments, questions, thoughts? Just from friends that know that I'm in the Sustainability Commission, they have specifically asked me to bring this to your attention, the smoking ordinance, and try to go with it. So just letting you guys know. Mm -hmm. there are, There is an interest in the public, uh, but and it's also passed a few years ago, I think, it's just basically uh, implementing it. The, the policy, I think, right? Is that it? it, it so it was, it basically reached a place of like a pretty final policy recommendation, but it was never passed We're by the council in this before. form. There are other pieces of legislation that kind of get at different aspects of smoking in public, but this these particular aspects have not yet gone to the council. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what, what about the, like, this is the scenario of, in my neighborhood, in my street, two to four homes got some work done where the people are working on a building for a whole day, and by the end of the day, there are like those workers are smoking when they are taking a break. And I felt like it's a little bit violation for the street because they're smoking and leaving the butts there. And I don't know how to handle that. So I gently told them, Hey, can you guys clean up after yourself? You know, you're smoking out of the house, you're smoking in the street. But leaving those bugs like that is not appropriate for the street or for the home. So, do we want to ask businesses anything about that, or is that going to be an issue with human? You know, that's a question. I don't actually know off the top of my head what law applies to that right now. Let me look into it um, because that may be covered by existing code. But if it isn't, then we can revisit that topic. But I think it might be covered under something, but I'm not sure. Thanks for so question is, is the current ordinance that we can review it and is it available the additional things you've been talking about? So I can share the basically the latest version that we've worked on yeah, by the commissions. I think if the if the desire is for more more of a sense of public feedback on this and kind of for the commission to dig into it further, then I suggest we put it on a future agenda in January or February. That way I'll get you guys all the materials, all the reports that I have, and then you can kind of notice it on the agenda. That way if people want to come and give more public comment, they can do that as well and you can get that done. So that's one option that we could take, but I can definitely circulate that information to the commission. Uh, I advocate that we don't really get heavily involved in this, um, but because we were initially, and it was mainly through, I always blame my name, Carl. Uh, uh, Carl Baker. Uh, uh, that uh, we should have some input over what happens, but apparently city council members, some city council members, these are reports from uh, others, uh, the city council members, some city council members are interested, and there's apparently some thoughts from somewhere about cutting out portions of it and passing those. So I don't think that we 
I'm not wild about us taking a lot of time with it because we have plenty to do. But but because it sort of was part of our agenda a good while back, we should at least be reviewing it. So so I guess I'm saying a, a slow and low approach. So uh, I would say in the interest of time, we're now running about 30 minutes behind. Yeah, right. we can cut some things as well. Um, maybe that will be the only policy priority I update on this time. Does any, maybe when we come back to future agenda requests, we can take a sense of the commission's thoughts on how we would like to move forward. That's good, because we can also, we use in the um, emails, mm -hmm. once we've got the addresses working, then we can put any more questions for information stuff to you and get that. Correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then should we just have a committee? Yep. Okay. I'm reporting for Scour. Okay. Uh, Scour, there, this, there's a report from Scour and with the materials. I, um, I don't have a lot to bring to the full commission, mainly because we're running out of time and energy. Uh, the only thing I would make a point of noting is some is what may seem least important. Which is that we had a presentation from Bread and Flowers Bakery about their wanting to get involved in doing sponsored cleanups. And we talked about developing potentially a shell for doing sponsored cleanups so that organizations like that could do neighborhood cleanups or area cleanups. And that's, I think that's a, 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 something that we should consider in putting in place. And, and LP has some suggestions for how to create such a a shell, meaning a shell, meaning a framework that people could plug into. And I think that would be a good way to get environmental concerns more broadly around the city if we could do that. So I think that's one of the important things um, coming up, even though we have plenty of things to talk about, like franchise. <laughs> okay. Any questions for Commissioner Gray? I appreciate the conciseness and speed of your report. Commissioner <laughs> Gray? Maybe it'll be a bit longer, but not much. Um, okay. <laughs> the report from the uh, Climate Action Subcommittee is not with it is not in the agenda packet because we just met last Wednesday and I didn't have time to write it and get it into the agenda packet. But I'll just mention a couple of things. Um, in January, um, we're going to have a discussion by Christian on the PlaceWorks um, analysis process for analyzing greenhouse gases. Um, and we'll be talking about the 2020 update on that analysis, and then we'll be reporting back on that to the commission. Um, the drive through coffee shop, at, the, at our meeting last month, we did uh, agree to make public testimony at the December 14th City Council meeting, basically requesting that the City Council oppose a drive through coffee shop based on principle um, of trying that we need to reduce uh, vehicle transportation and not encourage it. It turned out that the um, the agenda item was a little bit different by the time the meeting happened than we anticipated. Um, the the uh, company of Starbucks who proposed it had made some changes to the proposal that would have allowed some walk up and outdoor seating. Um, and so the council um, just basically voted to um, give them 90 days to work out some details and discuss it some more so it'll come back to the council. But I think it was significant that it was uh, well received that sustainability did make a comment. And, and I think some of the council members realized that it's important that they consider um, our, our input on projects like that. Um, one other thing is shade structures. Um, also at the meeting last month, we had a present a discussion from the Public Arts Commission and people from Parks and Recreation about um, the shade structures and parks, the art, artistic shade structures. We discussed that at the subcommittee meeting. Um, we're, um, we're going to have another discussion in our January subcommittee meeting with the focus on what involvement the Sustainability Commission um, should have, if any, and then we'll report back at the January commission meeting so there'll be more discussion about that in January. Two questions? Do you do you have do you need any more members in your subcommittee? Um, there is I one more. Box. We have we have one space. Yes. Mm -hmm. I may be interested. Great, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so moving on from that, that would mean we're on to the uh, commissioner comments and upcoming agendas. 
Okay, so um, quickly, just to start out, um, what we're going to do with this board is that we're also going to compile this and put it into a list of our future agenda things. So I'm going to quickly just read off what I can read here of some things that have been requested for future agendas, um, and we'll work with the chair and vice chair and commission to prioritize these. So I'm seeing bird strikes on windows, which I know we've talked about in the past, um, education and compliance on gas hard leaf blowers, um, which I know is, is a perennial topic. And I feel like we almost need to set like an annual date at which we talk about that, but it's important to talk about. Shade structures, um, I know we've, that's something that I know Christian is also getting ready to do some more work on and maybe put in a grant application. Um, so that's something in relatively short order and also in the subcommittee that's gonna come up. Solar and city buildings, I like it, that's a good one. We can talk about it. Um, I don't know if we're ready to talk about it in January, but we'll put it on the list for February, March. Um, creating information for digital education um, or education via digital media. I agree. Let's think about the best way to do that on an agenda. Um, community garden for each neighborhood. Makes sense. Um, we should definitely discuss. And then also more doc stations. So we'll compile all these and put them in the list. Um, if there are any other things, so I know you'll you, if you're doing math, you'll notice that it says everybody has two minutes, but we've allocated 10 minutes for this. That's not math. Um, so I would encourage you to be targeted in your comments. Um, but we'll we'll actually just go around the room, I think, and we'll start with Commissioner Alexander to be on the spot. I actually don't have anything at the moment. Okay. Great. Thanks. Okay. Your colleagues. Surprise. I'm good. <laughs> We've said enough. Okay. Uh, no, thanks everyone for all your work. <laughs> oh, fair. No, I just say I put in more dog station because I took a walk this morning and I counted 18 droppings from El Cielo and Sonora, my street, yeah. to Ramon and uh, El Cielo oh, on right. both sides. So it's not very far. Yeah, and I think because people are coming back and everybody's taking their, there is no dog station. Yeah. So that's that might be something we can also just flip over to Public Works and ask if they'd be willing yeah. to do different. Okay. Oh, well, that concludes the meeting now. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Let me stop the recording. Thanks, Commissioner Ryder. It's funny. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Ryder. I didn't have to hear your that I even emailed the person who uh, Christian about it. I'm good. Thank you. Um, uh, I have nothing like.